Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, it's a week filled with great spring sports action. In the Coach's Corner, meet the man leading one of the state's top track programs at Playing Field. Plus, our Athletes of the Week just tossed back-to-back -back perfect games for University High School. It was really fun to throw mines, and I was on the field for Ian's, and that was a really cool experience to go back-to-back. -back. We're throwing down a new Zone Extra right now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Zone Extra. I'm Olivia Ray, and it's been a busy week full of spring sports action, and we have a little basketball news we want to start with here. In the coach's corner, he's also leading one of the top track programs in the area, and his boys' team is ranked number one in the state. Plainfield's Brian Pelkey is here, plus our Athletes of the Week made history at University High School throwing perfect games on back-to-back -back nights. We'll introduce you to Thomas Price and Ian Smitley, and you won't want to miss the latest edition of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Neidig of the IHSAA. And find out how you can be a part of a future show. Now, let's take a look at all that has happened this past week. Now, Thursday night, it was a ranked showdown in the Hoosier Crossroads as number one Westfield hosted third ranked Fishers. The Rocks trailing by a run in the fifth year until junior Colin Lindsay takes it deep to left. That ball is gone. Game tied at one and we head to the bottom of the seventh all tied up still. Colin Brown though, the sharp grounder. Westfield can't make the play and Fishers wins it two to one. The final score, the Tigers would go on to win game two of the series as well the next night. Now we head to Center Grove where Monday evening the state's new number one team hosted Westfield. Top of the third here rocks already up three nothing and Colin Lindsay slaps it down the third baseline to drive in Luke Starr and put Westfield up four. Now top of the fifth Lindsay at it again this time a long solo home run. That one's deep to center field. The rocks are ahead five to one but bottom of the seventh Center Grove. They've pulled within three runs. The bases are jacked and Grant Sawa flies out to end the threat and the game. Close there, Westfield five, Center Grove two was the final score. And that great matchup Monday featured two of the top four teams in this week's coaches poll. Let's take a look at the top five. Center Grove, of course, sitting at the top at number one. Evansville North at two, rounded out by Fishers, Westfield and Jasper. All right, in softball, we're now less than a month away from the start of the state tournament. In fact, the sectional draw takes place Sunday evening. So meanwhile, on the field, plenty of great action. Tuesday was the Mudsock rivalry night as Hamilton Southeastern hosted Fishers. Top of the third here, Peyton Fox. The drive off the top of the wall. That's an RBI double and HSE leads four to two. Now the Tigers claw back here though. Base is loaded in the six. The pitch gets away from HSE and Naya Duplessis comes home to score and ties up the game. This one is going to go into extras. Free softball here. Fishers takes the lead in the ninth. Last chance for the Royals here, but Kate Murray strikes out Stephanie Penny and Fishers wins a thriller six to five. Now let's take a look at this week's Class 4A Coaches Association softball rankings. Ron Colley sitting at number one. New Pal two, Bedford North Lawrence, Mooresville and Whiteland. Bunch of Central Indiana schools and the top of these softball rankings there. All right, I promised you basketball news, so here we go. It was a fun day Saturday as Pike High School played to the Prep Ball Stars Midwest Challenge as teams from Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin faced off in a showcase event. So here's in the championship game. Team Indiana faced off against Team Michigan. The game was tied in the first half. Former North Central Panther Leland Walker buries the three. Indiana takes the lead. Now second half, Team Indiana in transition. Tayshawn Comer of Cathedral knocks down a triple. He led the team with 33 points, and now it's Ryan Conwell of Pike driving and finishing with the reverse layup. He had 28 in his home gym. Indiana wins it by 10. We caught up with Conwell, who says it was great playing with his fellow Indiana seniors. The event was, you know, fun. You know, it was just fun to, you know, just play with, you know, just. A couple of my friends, you know, we, we've actually been playing, you know, with one another, 
you know, since we were little. So it was fun just to play with one another. It was a good environment, you know, and uh, it was a fun game. I have a lot of memories, you know, on that on that court. So, you know, it was fun just to go out there and play one last time, you know, and enjoy myself. All right, congrats to Team Indiana and a little coach news here. Congrats to Chris Giffen the new boys basketball coach at Lawrence North. Now Giffen, of course, replaces the legendary Jack Kiefer, who retired after 46 seasons with the Wildcats. Giffen has spent the past 10 years as the LN girls coach, leading the program to the state finals twice, winning the 4A championship in 2020. Now Giffen tells us the blessing of Kiefer is who actually encouraged him to take the job. I asked him point blank, you know, do you think this is a good opportunity for me right now to try and secede you in terms of, you know, the legend and the courts named after you. And as you guys said, the, you know, the only coach in 46 years and he endorsed me and he was positive and supportive, of course. And he just talked about how I needed to rely on everything that I learned and my work ethic and my love for the game and for working at the game with the players. And, and so I think that was the best piece of advice he could give me. All right, big shoes to fill. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Jack Kiefer over at LN, though. All right, now moving to lacrosse news. The regular season action continues across the state, and we had a good one last week between the past two boys 2A champions. So to Hamilton County we go, where defending state champ HSE hosted number one Cathedral. We pick it up with the game tied late in the third. Campbell Reed, the shot and the goal. The Irish lead by one going to the final period here. And after HSC ties things up, Cathedral erupts four goals in a two minute stretch. Insanity. Reed from the tight angle there scores again. The Irish win this one 13 to 10. And let's check out the current boys rankings in class 2A. Cathedral, they're at the top right there and you just saw why Carmel is at, at number two, Hamilton Southeastern, Fishers, and Zionsville at number five. Meanwhile, it's hard to believe the end of the track and field season. It's quickly approaching. Tuesday at Mooresville, the Pioneers hosted Decatur Central and Greenwood in a meet, and this would be a good evening for the host Pioneers as both the Moore Mooresville boys and girls earned victories. Now, we're only three weeks away from sectionals in track, so let's look at this week's rankings. First for the girls, North Central, in front, Carmel, Zionsville, Brownsburg, and Noblesville all in the top five. To the boys' side of things, Plainfield, number one. Remember that one. Brownsburg at number two, Columbus North at three, Carmel, and Fishers rounding that out. All right, it is time for a break, but we have much more ahead on the Zone Extra. So I just told you to remember that Plainfield track and field name. Look who's here. Up next in the Coach's Corner, we are joined by Quakers head coach Brian Pelkey for a conversation. And last week, a pair of teammates threw perfect games in back-to-back -back games. We'll introduce you to our Athletes of the Week from University High School. That's still ahead on Zone Extra. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. The Coach's Corner, presented by Junk King. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. It is time now for one of our favorite segments, the Coach's Corner. This man has been a part of the Plainfield track for 40 years. Now, the past 19 years, he's been the boys' head coach, and for nearly a decade, he's also led the girls' team. So, welcome to the Zone Extra, Plainfield track and field head coach, Mr. Brian Pelkey. It's wonderful to have you, especially in the midst of the regular season as it's winding down the state tournament just a few weeks away. This is your busiest time of the year. Yes, Olivia, it is. Uh, we've had uh, some big invitationals as of late. Uh, our boys and girls won the uh, Lawrence Central invite a couple weeks ago. The boys uh, won the Pike Invitational this past week, and our, our boys have uh, just done an outstanding job. They were, they were second in the state in the indoor and the HSR Hoosier State Relays. For the first time ever, we were ranked number one going into that meet. Car Carmel ended up beating us, but it came down to 26 one hundredths of a second in one relay and 20 one hundredths of a second <laughs> in another relay to determine who was going to win and who, who was going to be second. So it was very, very tight, but very, very exciting. Um, appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to give our kids some recognition and to give our program some recognition. And uh, just uh, within the past week, we went back to number one again. Although Brownsburg got us in a dual meet, 
somehow we stayed number one uh, this week. And I, I noticed Center Grove is moving up the, the polls. Coach Moore there, that's their head football coach, state championship football coach, and also the head uh, track coach uh, who's won a state championship there at Center Grove. So Center Grove is definitely going to be in the mix uh, for, the, for the state meet this year. We'll keep our eye on Center Grove, but right now we have our eye on number one. And I want you to explain what that does for your team. A number one ranking, is that good for their mindset heading into the postseason? Because I've been watching Plainfield climb up the rankings all season long. We've been pretty solid for, so far. And, and uh, I, I, I tell you what, some of our, our sprinters are some of our best athletes, but our, um, our throwers have really stepped up. I, Isaac Mascalier, who's a great football player for our football program, and Chris Strange, another football player, they've really stepped up their game. Uh, they, they were they were in the lower 100s and and then in the high 30s in the shot put and discus and and now they're um, Isaac Mascaleer's throwing 145 and and Chris Strange throwing 48 so they've stepped up their game. We've got two uh, junior pole vaulters that have stepped up their game as well. So so the kids are really buying into the opportunity that hey we're part of a number one program we want to do our part. And I now want your take on the girls team because they're also having a great season but what do they do best in your mind well it's it's pretty much across the board we've got a very good distance runner veronica hargrave we've got the number one pole vaulter in the state mckenzie van bibber we've got two of the top high jumpers in the state uh, alexis decker and haven hudson and um, uh, ellie stewart a freshman that was uh, on our uh, girls basketball team she's she keeps getting better and better every single meet and uh, so we're, we're excited about our, our, our girls season. Uh, Brooke Joseph uh, just broke the school record in the long jump, uh, 17 feet, seven inches. And she's also our, our best uh, hurdler in the 100 hurdles and the 300 hur hurdles. It's pretty fun to be a coach when you have a team that's jam packed with D1 athletes that could be potential D1 athletes yes, at the next level as yeah. we discussed before we came on the show here. But, uh, Coach, let's look at the upcoming schedule because I'm sure those future D1 athletes have been eyeing this. You guys have a tough one in the weeks ahead before we get to the postseason. We just heard you talk about Greenwood, the Mid-State meet, Cascade, and then three weeks from now is sectionals. So so what do you have your eye on and what do you want to see from your team? Well, our, we're focused right now on, we've, we've got to meet tomorrow at uh, Greenwood, Greenwood Martinsville. And, uh, and then next Tuesday is the Mid-State Meet. And, it, and it, it's, it's, it's a great uh, group of conference schools that uh, track is important for them. And so it's, it's, it's a real honor to, to win that meet. And we, we, the boys and girls won that meet, so we're defending champs. And uh, obviously with uh, the number one ranking, we've got a tar the boys have got a target on their back. There's, there's other teams that, that want to get that girls championship as well. So it, it'll, it'll, it'll be tough. But as you mentioned, we our D1, possible D1 athletes, Nair, Nair, Nair Nawash Campbell, Connor Maple, Harrison Herbeck, uh, Bodie Gilkerson, that's our high jumpers, our hurdlers, and our sprinters. Um, like I said, potential D1 athletes. All right, Coach, quickly before we go here, it's hard to put say quick when you're talking about 40 years of experience and 40 years of being the head coach but what keeps you coming back year in and year out because I know the athletes a lot of them look at playing field for your guidance well it's 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 I've spent 20 years as a as an assistant coach to Dave Teeny and I've, I've been the head coach now for 20 years and the girls head coach for 10 years and uh, just the opportunity to work with young people it keeps me young I'm 63 years old and it keeps me young and I, I enjoy my my teaching job I teach government which is always an interesting interesting topic to teach and uh, and and coaching track it's just just one of those things that uh, uh, you get to see kids progress no no, no matter whether they're, they're the best athlete or our number 30 sprinter and our number number 30 sprinter the other day improved his time by two seconds and the, the kids when we talked about it they're all applauding for him and so that's that's the great thing about track and field it's all measurable and you can see improvement and it's not like starting lineups and you know point guards and quarterbacks and that type of thing all right well thank you so much to head coach brian pelkey of plainfield those times are getting better because i think he's out there sprinting next to him <laughs> 63 year old brian pelkey 40 years of experience well done here again thank you for joining us here thanks on the thanks Zone for the Astro. opportunity Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Good luck in the postseason and the regular season ahead. All right. Still ahead on the Zone Extra, it is our Athlete of the Week feature. Last week, a pair of senior teammates threw back-to-back -back perfect games. 
Up next, meet Thomas Price and Ian Smitley of University High School. Plus, we reveal our play of the week. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Now, University Baseball, they're ranked number three in this week's Class 2A coaches poll. And a big reason for the team's success so far this season has been excellent pitching and that's including a historic stretch for the Trailblazers just last week. Now Thursday night senior Thomas Price threw the first pitch first perfect game in University High School history as the Trailblazers defeated Shortridge. Now the very next evening senior Ian Smitley took the mound for University against Seton Catholic also delivered a perfect game. Now both players say last week was an experience they will not forget anytime soon. It was really fun. Uh, it was really fun to throw mine just because, I don't know, I get to be on the mound and then I was on the field for Ian's and that was a really cool experience to go back to back and see how that was going to happen. It was very exciting, especially going into that fifth inning and I knew I was getting there. It was very exciting for me, especially Thomas' first one in school history and then me coming out there the very next day. You know, as you start to see the innings unfold, um, I, they get a little more excited, a little more excited and Everybody's moving a little quicker. They're going out with the intention of we're going to make a play. It was really awesome to see that the kids rise to the occasion, especially when they play for each other like our group does. We're a really close group. In past years, it's been, we've always been close, but this group's definitely a little bit closer than those groups I've been part of. It's been really fun, especially then going back to freshman year whenever we won state. It's feeling like the same exact feeling over again. All right, well done to those guys. Now time for a break here, but more still to come on The Zone Extra, including our play of the week. Plus, it's the latest installment of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nydick of the IHSAA. This is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to The Zone Extra. Now it is time for Ask the Commissioner. Each week we take one of your questions to the IHSAA Commissioner, Mr. Paul Neidig, and we bring you his answer. So here's this week's question. We've seen a lack of umpires affect some game schedule this season. Now, is there anything that can be done to help address that issue? Here's Paul. The understanding, you know, when we have rainouts, uh, and we'll speak specifically to baseball or softball right now, uh, I can remember back 20 years ago when I was a high school athletic director, uh, there was always challenging times to reschedule games because as you have games that are canceled because of weather, that's usually happening regionally. So multiple schools are canceling because of weather. Then we throw in the fact that there may have been games scheduled on that day already. So trying to find enough umpires uh, during a, a rescheduled contest in the springtime is something that we've struggled with uh, for years. But I would tell you, we there's no doubt about it that we need more umpires. We need more officials. We need more um, track starters. We need more. And it's a way that people can give back. We're constantly recruiting, looking at our methods of recruitment, and we're still trying to find out ways that we can get more people uh, involved in the game on an annual basis. And you know, uh, fans can cheer. Uh, they need to be a little careful with the jeer out there and uh, make sure that we're supporting student athletes and umpires because if we don't do that, uh, the, the families that enjoy watching their children play may not have games to watch. All right, great words of advice there from Mr. Nighting. So thanks again for the commish for joining us here on Wish TV. And don't forget you can submit questions by sending us a tweet using the hashtags the zone extra and ask the commish. Now let's check out our play of the week. Back we go to the prep ball stars game. It's Mount Vernon's Ahmad Gerard, the blow by and the one hand slam. Let's see that one again from the IPY commit. Our crew see a lot of great action, but we want to see your best plays every week, too. Your video could be featured on The Zone Extra as our play of the week. Here's what to do. Tweet us the video of a great play using the hashtag The Zone Extra, and then tune in on Thursday night to see if your submission becomes our play of the week. All right, that's going to do it here tonight for The Zone Extra. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to tune in again next Thursday night for a brand new episode. Have a great night, everyone.